Hello there, my name is Jack. I work here at the Rapson shop and uh, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the basics of foam model making, um, specifically using HDPU. So starting off with what HDPU actually stands for, um, I have a break right here. HDPU stands for high density polyurethane. Um, it's a foam which um, in your case will be eight pound density. There's a lot of different densities ranging from I think like five to 25 to even more. You guys will be working with eight pound which is pretty light um, and can crumble under certain pressures, but it retains quite a bit of detail nonetheless. So just a fair warning about HDPU, it is really toxic, uh, it's really bad to ingest, and so when you're working with it, you're gonna want to be wearing a mask, which I'm sure you all have by now, um, but really it's best to have at least an N95 mask, or better yet, you can get a super sick respirator quite like this, they're like 20 bucks, you can get them at Home Depot, or Menards or whatever, and um, the 3M brand makes really good ones. It's a great investment as protecting your lungs is gonna be super important for this kind of thing. Definitely a worthwhile purchase. Um, they're also significantly more comfortable than uh, other masks and they come with replaceable filters. Not an ad, just definitely worth the money. That being said, HDPU is actually a really fun material to work with, so I'm just gonna get right into the process of uh, model making. So when you have a form that you want to make out of foam, it's really important to understand the orthographic views of that form. And it's really important that you sketch those onto at least two sides of the block of foam itself. This will allow you to either shave down with sandpaper or cut with a bandsaw of some kind uh, down to a basic shape or a sort of like blocky version of what you're looking to make. And this is really the greatest start you can have for a form itself. Uh, from here, you can take sandpaper uh, as well as some other tools that I'll get into later to finesse the shape into what you're looking for. And it's kind of the first time you're interacting with the form in a 3D space, so you can really get a feel for what changes you might need to make. Uh, but once you're happy with the form itself, you can go into more detail uh, with some parting lines or some contours, or really just uh, flesh out some ideas you couldn't really get before when you were drawing it. What's really important is that you take your time and uh, really just be patient because it can take some time to make things symmetrical or just get a feel for what you're looking for. Uh, but just be patient and keep going with it. So I'm going to keep the tooling really simple uh, for this project uh, because I know a lot of people are still remote and I don't particularly know what you guys have access to. Uh, so that being said, everything I've made for this demo and everything I've shown you, I've done with just sandpaper. So I know it is possible. Tools like band saws and carving tools will make things quicker in some instances, but they're not required. So just keep that in mind that you're not limited by your tools, um, but it will take some patience. So the two basic tools that I think everybody has access to, um, guaranteed, is sandpaper and X-Acto blades. Um, X-Acto blades are really great. Uh, they come in all sorts. X-Acto blades come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Um, you can go to somewhere like Michael's or Blick and pick up a pack of X-Acto blades. These will usually come in a whole bunch of shapes, kind of like that. Uh, probably find them on Amazon. Um, they're not really necessary, but it is nice to have a plethora of different shapes to use uh, in case you have like a certain form that you're trying to cut. Um, but these are really good for detail work. Um, they're not particularly great for carving because again, this eight pound stuff does chunk out uh, fairly easily. So sandpaper is really the way to go uh, for more, most forms with this. But if you want to do like a cut in channel, something very harsh, uh, it might be good to use an X-Acto knife for that application. I've also made some tools of my own. This is going to be a really helpful uh, thing to do when you're working with foam. A lot of times you'll find it that sandpaper just won't cut it and sometimes you need a little bit of extra edge. So I have a block here and uh, I spray adhesive three of the sides uh, and then put sandpaper on it and cut off the excess. I also did that to a little one inch PVC pipe here. Uh, these are really great. This can make really nice chamfers uh, as well as um, really nice radiuses on the edges. It just keeps things even and gives you a nice flat surface to reference. Or if you need like a 90 degree angle, it's really nice to have these little blocks. Um, and then these little pipes can be made uh, at pretty much any size. If you have a curve and you know the radius that it needs to be, then you can make a tool specifically for that and get it perfect every time. Uh, that being said, you can cut any shape and put sandpaper on it. So if you have a really weird shape you're trying to cut or just trying to carve into something, um, you can cut a piece of wood to that size or a piece of plastic, anything really. Spray adhesive some sandpaper to it and then you've got a custom tool for that application. That being said, you can do all that with just sandpaper. Sandpaper bends really evenly and so if you just kind of crimp the edges, um, you can make really nice radii uh, that are really helpful to sort of sand divots into different pieces of foam 
if you want a nice organic form or you just want like a slope, you can sort of press down in the middle and get a really even curve across the whole surface, which is really helpful, um, especially because it's quick. Um, you don't have to go make a whole tool, you can just use a piece of sandpaper. You can also rip or cut sandpaper to any certain size, so if you have a curve that you know the dimensions of, then uh, you can just cut your sandpaper to that size and then you won't have a problem um, sanding it like you might if you had like a corner, which might tear at the foam. And again, you can do this with any grit. Um, you'll probably end up having all sorts of little scraps because they're usually easier to handle than big pieces, so don't be afraid to go through sandpaper. I mean, be smart about it, but you know, it's cheap, there's plenty of it, it's really helpful stuff, and uh, it's probably gonna be what you're interacting with most when you're doing this model making. I should also mention that these files are really nice. Um, you can get tri-tip files, circular files, uh, bastard files, all sorts of stuff. Um, you can get them cheap on Amazon. Again, not something you need, but if, again, if you want a nice even shape on something, uh, having little, little rasps are really good. Also, if you haven't been to Axman ever in Minneapolis, go. It's like the coolest place ever. Uh, they have a lot of really cheap tools, but again, you can get all this stuff on Amazon. Um, it's also not a necessity, but keep it in mind. So since foam is really good at making organic forms and double curved surfaces, you're probably going to run into contours quite a bit. Um, I just wanted to give you a couple techniques on making those. Uh, if you want like a deep well like this, uh, you're probably going to want to cut out most of the material itself with an X-Acto blade, uh, which will not only save you some time, but it'll give you a reference of where you're working on the piece. I made this with just a piece of sandpaper, uh, and when you're doing that, it's important to make sure you're using long, continuous strokes to get really even curves, uh, and holding it up to the light really helps you see that line uh, for the curve itself, and you can make sure everything's even and smooth. You can also make really nice chamfers and contours using this technique. That being said, much like everything else, it's about being patient and taking your time and just kind of finessing it until you get what you want. So part lines are a really simple way to show a material split on the surface of your model. Um, they also add a lot of realism because most products are made um, in a mold, which have part lines themselves. Uh, and there's a couple different ways that you can do them. You could fold sandpaper in half and make a hard edge. And using that, you can scratch in the part line itself. You can also use things like files uh, or the tools that you might have made before. And this also makes painting uh, a model two different colors a lot easier because you can tape off these parting lines a lot easier than you could just a flat surface. So if you need a larger piece of foam than you have, you might need to glue two pieces together. Uh, my opinion, the best way to do this is with Gorilla Glue. Uh, Gorilla Glue is an expanding foam, which is usually really annoying because it just kind of moves two pieces apart. But for foam, it's actually really good because it's definitely the best adhesive I've seen for foam. You can also minimize the expanding by clamping the two pieces really tightly together so that they don't pull apart. Gorilla Glue is a moisture activated adhesive, so it's really important that you wet both sides of the foam with a wet rag. After that, you just apply a fair amount of the glue itself uh, to each piece and then sort of smush them together until the glue is even on both sides. Uh, and then you're just going to clamp it so that it's nice and tight and leave it for a couple hours and you get one solid block kind of like this. So when you're finishing any model, the surface finish before you paint is really important. It's probably going to be the most important part for the outcome of the paint finish itself. That being said, primer is your best friend, and Rust-Oleum makes a really good filler primer. Uh, it's also called sandable primer sometimes. They're a little different, but they're pretty much the same. Uh, what it does is it fills the small gaps um, of the porous foam, and so that it gives it a better layer for the paint to actually go onto. This is a pretty good base for your other layers of finishing products, so getting two, two to three good coats of this before you start anything else is really important. So filler primer alone won't fill all the pores on your foam. Uh, I think the best option for a perfectly smooth finish is to use spot filler. Um, Bondo makes a really good spot filler. It's usually used to like fix scratches when they're doing bodywork on cars. Um, so it's not really meant to fill any big voids. However, it works really well for filling the pores on foam. One thing about spot filler or any Bondo product that is, much like HDPU, it's really bad for your lungs. So don't get it in your lungs. Uh, you're gonna wanna have a respirator like that or at least an N95 mask. Uh, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area and wear gloves when you work with it. Also when you're sanding it releases like a really nasty red dust which is uh, super annoying and it's also like really bad for your lungs once again. So if you get it on your clothes or you get it on your hands make sure you wash them after um, because you don't want to be tracking it all around the house or your apartment or anything. This doesn't take any pre-mixing like other Bondo products, so you can just pop the cap and press it right out of the tube. Um, what you do is you put a little bit on your finger, uh, one that should have a glove on it, and then you wipe it onto the surface that you're trying to fill the gaps in. 
Make sure you're only using a small layer because again, this isn't for voids, it's just for a very fine surface. After that dries, you're gonna sand it with a high grade sandpaper and that will give you a really nice finish. After you're done with your spot filler, what you're gonna do is do another coat of primer, at least one. Um, this is so your paint has something to really stick onto. Bondo's okay, but it's good to have an even coat of uh, something for your paint to sit on. And then right before your paint, you're gonna sand it very lightly for a really, really smooth finish. And then you can go ahead and paint like you would anything else. So just to recap, you're gonna go from a piece of smoothly sanded foam to your filler primer, then to your spot filler. Then you're gonna go and sand your spot filler. Then you're gonna prime it again, sand it lightly again, and then you can go for your final painting. This might sound like a lot, but that's because it is. Uh, finishing takes like a third to two thirds of the time when making a model uh, if you want a really good one. So make sure you plan accordingly when you are making your model and don't rush the finish because a good finish takes quite a bit of time to get. So that's about it for the basics of foam model making. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful and I wish you guys the best of luck.